We know that our loved ones here, our ancestors are here. This ground penetrating radar technology is revealing evidence, undisputable proof that crimes were committed. The remains of 215 children near the former site of a residential school. The Cowessis First Nation announced the preliminary findings of 751 unmarked graves near a former residential school. Our elders, our survivors, and friends of our survivors have told the stories that knew these burials were here. It was a part of the TRC hearings. Survivors talked about it. They were not believed. And now we have the proof. This ground penetrating radar has given us evidence. Okay, so we're looking for anything like a sewer or an electrical conduit. We're using a device called ground penetrating radar or GPR. If an indigenous community wanted help locating unmarked graves in Quebec, they'd most likely come to this team. My name is Adrian Burke. I'm a professor of archaeology in the Department of Anthropology at Université de Montréal. My name is Jean-Christophe Ouellet. I'm a professional archaeologist at the Department of Anthropology at Université de Montréal. This kind of looks like a lawnmower, but I know it's not. Maybe you can just explain what I'm actually looking at here. Yeah, it's a very expensive lawnmower. Essentially, it has an antenna right in here, and that antenna is sending energy waves into the ground. And then you have a counter in the wheel that is essentially counting the exact distance that you're moving. And then the third element that's important is this tablet. And what this tablet does is it essentially is talking to the antenna, and it's collecting the data. So how does GPR see underground? Basically, it measures the speed at which waves travel through the ground and back to the antenna. When the waves go from one type of soil to another, or when they hit a rock or a hole dug years ago, they change speed. When all that information is plotted out on a grid, it reveals clues about what's under our feet. Essentially, it's really ideal for looking for what we call anomalies in the ground. You're seeing essentially disturbances in the ground, like somebody excavated a shaft or a trench and then filled it back in. If, for example, in a cemetery, one says that they found with a GPR 250 burials, it's probably that they have 250 burial shafts. And yes, it is entirely possible that there is more than individ one individual in each of those shafts. Is there a chance that things can get missed, that you don't see everything? Yes, you can definitely miss uh, bur burial shafts because generally uh, the GPR isn't really going to pick up, for example, the actual human remains or even a coffin. And it's actually quite easy to miss those burial shafts. So just because we don't find, uh, for example, burial shafts with the GPR doesn't mean there aren't burials there. And of course, I think it's important to listen to people's stories and their, their own uh, memories. So now that you're kind of all done the surveying part, what's the next step? Well, the next step is to get in the lab or the computer to gather the data, put everything together, and we can also do some corrections with the, the software and look at the results uh, on the screen. So now what we're seeing is a, is a view from above. You can already see those white dots. Those could be, uh, the, could be rocks that are not too big. But if we get closer to the surface, we can already see something that's quite clear and really linear and not too wide. This is, uh, this is probably the, the pipe we were talking about before. So it's, it's a good example of what we can find with GPR. As the search for Indigenous children's graves continues, archaeologists want to send a clear message. Ground penetrating radar is a useful tool but it is not a replacement for first-hand knowledge. We shouldn't require the scientific application of GPR in order to confirm or validate the stories and the experiences and the testimonies of those survivors. 